Keratosis pilaris goes by many names. Some people call it chicken skin. Some people call it lichen pilaris, strawberry skin, uh, follicular keratosis, and it is extremely common. In fact, it's one of the most common skin conditions in the world. It affects up to 80% of kids and up to 40% of adults. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about what it is and how to treat it. But first, if you're new to Diana in the Pink, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You are watching In the Pink, and if you're new here, In the Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, be sure to hit subscribe because you are in the right place. Now, before I jump into this video, I'd really like to hear from you. So let me know in the comment section, what is the best way that you have found to treat your keratosis pilaris so far? And if you haven't really done anything yet to try to help, put that in the comment section below too. It helps me to know where you are coming from as a viewer. So first off, Keratosis pilaris, also called KP, is a skin condition that appears as tiny reddish bumps on the arms and the thighs and also the cheeks. These little bumps are called papules and they can be scattered around or grouped together in a specific area on the skin. And what it is, is it's a buildup of skin cells inside the hair follicles and then these skin cells accumulate to form these tiny red bumps. Okay, so why do people get keratosis pilaris. Honestly, the cause is not entirely known, but a mutation in a protein called filaggrin has been associated with it. Filaggrin is a protein that plays a role in creating a more efficient skin barrier. So if you have a disruption in this protein, it's thought to lead to a formation of plugs in the hair follicle, which manifests as these reddish papules or red bumps. It can be inherited as well, but not all parents with KP or keratosis pilaris will have kids with KP. It really varies and there are many factors that can affect its appearance. So who gets KP? It's often seen in children and in teenagers and as they grow older, keratosis pilaris often improves on its own. Both boys and girls can get it, but we tend to see it more often in girls. It can also be more apparent during pregnancy and we see it more often in people with other skin conditions like atopic dermatitis or eczema because these are conditions that make the skin more dry, which also tends to exacerbate KP. Also, cold weather and rough clothing might worsen it. There also seems to be an association with type 1 diabetes and obesity. Now, just to clarify, if you have KP, this doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna develop diabetes. It just means that we tend to see KP a little more often in diabetics and obese kids and also adolescents. Now besides the appearance, there really isn't any other major symptoms. Sometimes it can be a little bit itchy, but it's not painful and it doesn't lead to more serious conditions and it won't scar, but it is difficult to treat and there really isn't a cure. Now some people do, you know, kind of grow out of it um, at some point in adulthood, but not always. But if you do want to be proactive on controlling keratosis pilaris, there are definitely some things that you can do to help. So let's go over that right now. So like I mentioned, keratosis pilaris alone is not a serious skin disorder and definitely can be managed at home. Home-based treatments are focused on preventing dry skin, which as I mentioned earlier, really can exacerbate keratosis pilaris. So let's start with some basic daily habits that you can work into your routine that can help. So the American Academy of Dermatology Association recommends some simple shower habits to prevent dry skin. So first off, instead of hot showers or baths, use warm or cooler water. Hot water can strip your skin of your natural oils and really does dry you out. Keep your shower shorter. Try to limit your time in the shower to like 10 minutes or less. Use a gentle or a mild soap. And if you aren't sure if it is, just check the label and make sure that there aren't any added alcohols or fragrances. It also helps to gently exfoliate while you're in the shower. And I really want to emphasize gently. So you can use like a loofah or a washcloth, but don't scrub your skin aggressively because that can actually irritate your skin even more. Another thing that you can do is use a humidifier, especially if you live in a drier climate. Also avoid really tight clothing that creates friction when you move. Now, if these precautions don't work well for you, you can try a variety of products called emollients. Most people just call these moisturizers. The best thing that you can do is right after you get out of the shower, pat yourself dry a little, but let the drier areas of your body and where your keratosis pilaris is 
remain wet and then apply your moisturizer. So I hope that makes sense. So just, you know, pat dry a little bit, but anywhere where you have, tend to have really dry skin or where you have your KP, don't dry that, leave that wet and then apply your moisturizer. This way it helps to trap the moisture in your skin. The reason you want to do this is when you dry your skin with a towel, you're actually absorbing some of that moisture that your skin has acquired during your shower. You're pulling that moisture out and away from your skin. So you can honestly just stay in the shower if you'd like and then keep your moisturizer in the shower. Do a quick pat down in your less troublesome areas of your body in terms of dryness and keratosis pilaris and then apply the moisturizer to the damp skin. And a great product to use as an emollient after a shower is CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. You can use this on your body and on your face if you want, but this method really helps to trap the moisture in. The next step, for treating KP is to use a type of product called a keratolytic. A keratolytic basically breaks down the outer drier part of the skin, which would help the inner layers to get more moisture. And they do a really great job of dissolving the skin flakes and the scales, and then that helps your skin to bind with moisture. And using both a moisturizer and a keratolytic alone can vastly improve the texture and appearance of your keratosis pilaris after several weeks of use. So let's talk more about three very good keratolytics, and then we can jump into the over-the-counter products that do a great job with helping to treat keratosis pilaris. So these three ingredients are salicylic acid, lactic acid, also called ammonium lactate, and urea. So salicylic acid is really, really good at getting down into the pores and exfoliating it. Lactic acid exfoliates and also hydrates the skin. And then urea in a concentration less than 10% is a good moisturizer, but over 10% is great to use because it acts as a keratolytic. So I'm gonna get into the products that contain one or more of these three ingredients. These definitely are not the only really good products out there, but I'm talking about them only to help give you a place to start when you're deciding what to purchase. So keep in mind that not every product will work for every person. And some people might actually have a little sensitivity to some of these ingredients, especially if you tend to have really sensitive skin. So just something to be aware of. So a great product that contains salicylic acid is called CeraVe SA. The SA stands for salicylic acid. It also has a lactic acid in it, which helps to exfoliate your skin. An example of a product with urea in it is Eucerin with urea, and it does a great job. And it also has lactic acid, which is nice, but you have to read the label because if you get this Eucerin, it will do a great job as a moisturizer, but the urea concentration is only 5%. And as I mentioned earlier, less than 10%, the urea will only moisturize. So you wanna make sure to get this Eucerin with 30% urea. And then this will do a really great job to work as a keratolytic to break down and chemically exfoliate your skin. Finally, a great example of a product with lactic acid is amlactin. And it's a great product to help break down that excess keratin in the dead skin cells. Now, there are a ton of different treatments out there, different combinations of the lactic acid and the urea and the salicylic acid that you can try. But if you have a really stubborn case, I recommend that you consult a dermatologist because they can talk to you about a second line treatment for keratosis pilaris, which is retinoids. Retinoid or vitamin A speeds up the rate of cell turnover and renewal, and it can also help with uh, the urethema and the redness that's associated with keratosis pilaris. Just be aware that the retinoids are not safe to use if you're pregnant. Your dermatologist might also prescribe a topical steroid. So topical steroids can help reduce the redness and the inflammation that a patient can experience with keratosis pilaris. But keep in mind that high potency steroid creams in general should be avoided in pregnancy as well. Now, if none of these therapies work and your keratosis pilaris seems to be getting worse, treatments like like laser therapy can also be done. So laser therapy can do a great job at removing the keratosis papules, and it's usually done by a dermatologist in their clinic. So hey, if you liked learning about keratosis pilaris and wanna know more about women's health topics, remember to hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell, and then comment down below if you have any topics that you would like me to talk about. Up next, I'm gonna to link to my video on how to help with stretch marks. So if you're wondering how to help with stretch marks of any kind, go ahead and click on the link right here, and I will see you over there.